Good day and welcome back to the 40 Audio Podcast with your host, Mr. Thomas Henley, of course. And today it's going to be a bit of a strange podcast because we are actually doing this live. I was thinking to myself that oh, it wouldn't it be funny for me to have two episodes in season three and then just switch and do, just do season four just because we're doing like a different format. Um, but m maybe not. We'll, we'll, I think we'll keep this as part of season three. And um, if you do want to, and you, if you do listen to this podcast on other streaming services or you watch the recording replay, uh, please do make sure to go and check out my channel beforehand so that you can get updated when we do do this live. Because we will be taking some comments, some pieces of the chat and using that as a sort of talking point. So if you want to stay engaged, then that would be really cool. Today, we're going to be addressing a different, well, obviously a different topic because it'd be a bit strange if we didn't have a different topic every time, but we're going to be talking about autism and pets and I was searching through, just looking through the internet, scouring the web to try and find the, the right person to do this, of course. Um, and of course, probably the best person to ask about this is my very, very good friend, Mike from Autistic AF. How are you doing today, Mike? I am doing great. Thank you very much for having me, Thomas. Uh, and also, yeah, if you are listening to Thomas on the other platforms, give him a, give him a good old rating as well. It's quite, <laughs> it's quite helpful to drop a, to drop a, a rating on those things. A good yes, rating, obviously. yes, it is, it is very true. I, I completely forget about the intricacies of like asking for like <laughs> likes and subscribes and ratings and stuff. I'm still trying to get it into my vocabulary of being online. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I understand. I do. I really do. Um, I feel like a, I, I don't know. I mean, in my, my brain's only just sort of crossing that threshold of, oh, am I a YouTuber now? Is that like, so, you know, there's this new vocabulary. I'm only just getting to grips with the whole neurodiversity vocabulary. Um, you know, and there's still some like elements of that I find difficult. We can talk about later. I mean, stimming, it just feels a little bit mm, to me. But no, <laughs> no, I'm not saying stimming is like not good for those that can't see on the camera. But like, um, yeah, it's like a whole load of new vocabulary. And for YouTube as well, same thing. I can subscribe. It's a very, very strange world. Well, um, it'll be, I suppose it'd be nice for anybody who doesn't um, know of you and your work, Mike, for, his, for you to give a little bit of a background maybe into your channel, possibly about where sort of the autistic cats come into the picture. I'm sure we'd be very, very happy to hear about that. That would be good to yeah. hear. <laughs> yeah, so I started uh, my YouTube channel in October 2023. Um, originally, I just wanted something quiet and simple. I, I just thought Autistic After 40 was available. So I just took that as a domain name and put a couple of videos on it, unlisted them. And they were just me talking to my phone uh, with the intention of sharing it with a couple of friends because the people that I sort of suggested, hey, look, I've, I've, I'm on a waiting list. I think I might be autistic. Um, they were like, no, you're, you're not autistic, or you can't be autistic, or why do you think you're autistic, or or you don't have, or you're not autistic, you have autism. It's something that can be treated, right? And it's like all this stuff. And I thought, oh, I can't be dealing with having this conversation with people mm. all yeah. the time. I'm not saying I'm a massive friend group, but if you're like onion circles, I've got family, and Nina's been very supportive. But at first, she was like, no, no, no you, you think you're not, you're not entirely sure. And do you know what I mean? So, so I kind of wanted to just sort of put something down that was edited but i like video as a as a medium mm -hmm. rather than sort of writing it down and so i thought i'll make some videos and then i can just sort of send them and go look this explains me better um and uh the thing that the thing that really came to mind for me was while i was doing that i made a video about monotropism um yes which is, I that was that was one of your first ones wasn't it so yeah, like i thought i wanted something that was like autism that wasn't that kind of explained how I felt or at least some of my struggles or at least something mm. explained what I'm sort of good at you know this kind of tunnel vision that we often have um you know generally a lot of autistic people relate quite strongly to autism it's a fantastic study by the way if you want to read it it's only a few pages long with three autistic authors um fantastic fantastic piece of writing yeah for, and, for anybody who uh, doesn't know about much about monotropism it's basically 
at, at its at its basic level, it is like the style of focus that people have. So like, um, I think I think you're right. There was maybe two or three sort of autistic researchers, like actually autistic people, um, who mm -hmm. sort of came up with the idea. And there's like monotropism, and then there's polytropism. Monotropism is more characterized as like an autistic thing whereby like um you find one thing to sort of pull you in quite a bit you know you hear phrases like autistic inertia um what was the the other one that we used in terms of hyper focusing of course that's another one that that gets thrown about quite a bit and it's it's quite an interesting theory because i think one of the i think one of one of the the shining positives of of that kind of study and that kind of work is that um it very much sort of takes away sort of the the pathology of it so like within the sort of medical school system um you know autism is kind of seen as this like through this very deficit type lens and it's kind of our behaviors around sort of being focused and struggling to transition are sort of highlighted as being like challenging behaviors or something that we need to fix. Whereas this kind of concept of monotropism sort of brought in that this is kind of like a inherent, like autistic trait, which um, I think kind of brings a bit more sort of power into the, into to the hands of the autistic people. I think it looks at it, not sort of like from an othering perspective. But from a, a, a just saying it how it is, you know, it's a different neurotype. It's a different way of, of being. It's neither good nor bad. It has good and bad aspects to it, of course, but it just it just is. Um, totally. And then as far as videos, I just went from there and thought, oh, we'll make another one. <laughs> and then another one. And by this point, I was now showing them to people uh, and getting, you know, in real life, that is. Um, and it was sort of helping people to understand. And I just carried on. Um, and I also started doing live streams as well, which were kind of great fun. Yeah, um, yeah. You, um, I think when I tuned in last time, you were playing a game like a, as as a cat or something. Oh, hey, oh, fantastic! Um, what was so that great game? to animals. Stray is 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 a wonderful, wonderful game. I actually pre-ordered that. I, I, I do you know what? I actually uh, had some email chats with the developers years ago when it was in a prototype because I just thought this is a wonderful idea. You know, you can be a cat and run around. You know, it's a three-dimensional platform game mm -hmm. as a cat. In a, it's, apocalyptic world it's a little bit dark it's not kind of the game that i would make but you get to be a cat oh my goodness you get to scratch furniture and everything it's brilliant is there a like um <laughs> I, I suppose like i suppose going a bit kind of deep do you have like a sort of an overarching goal or like what you something that you'd want you want to achieve by sort of being online or is it kind of just something that you because for, for me, when I started off, it was probably about seven years ago. I have been on in the online world for quite a while, but it's it's not really been something that I've been very consistent with. Um, but when I started, it was, I think I was probably about 19, 20. And I just, the reason why I started is because I wanted kind of like a platform to talk about my experiences and, and perhaps like, just kind of get it yeah. out of my brain and sort of onto onto a video. What what is your kind of? I fully, I fully understand, Thomas. I mean, it's like it's cathartic. So I, you know, I'd be lying if I said, "Hey, I'm doing this for other people or to educate." Or, it wasn't actually really that. It was almost like by making some early explainer videos. You can see it early on my on in my channel, actually. Especially now, I'm saying it explicitly. Um, those early videos. I'm almost explaining it to myself. It's almost a cathartic thing. I, it almost, almost therapeutic. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. You know, um, and it was a fantastic way of, uh, it's an odd way of disclosure. I mean, I think disclosure is a whole other topic. You know, <laughs> you just jump on the internet and tell loads of people. Um, but no, no, um, it kind of sort of makes sense. And I actually thought that by going on the internet and telling loads of people that it wouldn't, it wouldn't be like, it wouldn't be close to me. It turns out I'm completely wrong. And I met a neighbor who watches my channel. <laughs> yeah, so, I, you know. I, I, I completely, I completely agree. I think it's, I don't, I don't know about you, but I mean, it's something that I've been wrestling with for a while, but I think because my, my experience is so sort of atypical to those, particularly 
who are who are neurotypical sort of around me in my life, even if I really really care about them, um, it's 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 quite a hard thing for people to relate to. Like with anxiety disorder, people can sort of relate to the feeling of being anxious. Um, in terms of perhaps, obviously, it's not like all ADHD's kind of aspects, but in terms of sort of the the focusing aspect of like ADHD, like some people might be able to sort of relate a little bit to to that. But autism, there's like introverts, yeah. maybe. <laughs> oh, you're just introverted. That's what yeah. that is. Yeah, just introverted. <laughs> I think it's because you don't have. Like, like autism hasn't had its OCD moment, in my opinion. That, that moment of people where they go, oh, I'm a little bit OCD. I forgot my car key. You know, I for, I've left the cooker ring on or, oh, I need everything completely clean because I'm a bit OCD. They don't mean it. Like, just like some people where they say, oh, everyone's a bit autistic, particularly mm-hmm. with techies. I've spoken to a couple of techie friends that I think, well, they're almost certainly on the spectrum. But they're like, oh, you know, we don't think too much about it. We're all a bit on the spectrum, especially in this industry. And it's like, well, no. But just, you know, it's quite complicated because people don't really understand what that means. Like ADHD, particularly the inattentive and hyperactive side of those things, people can kind of almost understand what that means or relate to it and go, okay, I think I've got an idea what that is. But, you know, like if you're thinking about sort of TV and media, where are the autistic examples? Where are the autistic, Mm. not role models, but, and of course there's a spectrum. So there's no like... That's kind of part of the problem, really. <laughs> it's kind of like you can't really sort of put all the traits on character and go, here's your, F, you know, example. Or here's your Sheldon Cooper, for example. <laughs> it's not like that, um, you know. But then people go, oh, you're not like that. Or you're not like my... And it's true, everyone's got a five-year-old flipping nephew who's autistic with high support <laughs> needs. It's, where are they all? Where are all these kids? They've been everywhere. Um, <laughs> you're not like that. You're not autistic, um, so it's really it's quite odd. Um, yeah, and I think that's kind of a yeah. problem that I don't know if we're ever going to, as like an autism advocate community. Mm. I don't know that we're ever going to get there because it's such a wide spectrum. You can't say this is what autism is. This in every, you know for everyone, these are this is a set of challenges that everyone has, and they're exactly the same. That is one of, got high- one of the difficulties, isn't it? It's like. <laughs> Yeah. You know, you give any characterization of autism and it's it's not going to sink in or apply to or relate to some demographic of autistic people like <laughs> so it's mm-hmm. it's so it's always a, a task but um I do I do think that we do have like you're saying about like little little OCD like I have heard a lot of phrases going about at the moment like um a touch of tism um or Hello? The touch, touch of tism, people say, or I'm I'm a bit tistic. Like, like, I heard that one. <laughs> I give yeah. it a mustard, or it's <laughs> it's. Is it's that like, a good thing to have a touch of? Tism? <laughs> or is it? A, I don't know. It's by the devil, sort of thing. What, what, where are we at with this? <laughs> I don't know because obviously it really depends on the person who's saying it. Like some people, I think they just say it because they do think they're a bit autistic, but. They don't want to say like openly I'm autistic or, you know, so it could be used yeah. in that way. Some people might use it to describe themselves as being a bit quirky or unique or like, you know, so there's, I think there's, with a lot of stuff like that, I mean, you have uh, autistic people themselves, like autistic influences using that type of phraseology, but then you also have people who are outside using it as, in a sort of a derogatory way as well. So it's, it's quite complex, but um, let's not let's not um, dwell too much on the aspect of things because today we are going to be talking specifically about your experience with pets. And where are we go, what do we want to know? <laughs> I do want to sort of preface this by saying that although I have throughout my life um, pretty much grown up around dogs, like I think at every single point in my life, I've had some kind of dog loosely attached to the family, whether it's um, my mum's partner's dog or my dog or my brother's dog or there's always been some some dog in the family and it's it's very much sort of something that I would want. But one of the difficulties that I have in life tends to come in the form of executive dysfunction. And that's one of the reasons why I'm a bit tentative around 
getting a pet because I sometimes struggle to look after myself, you know, with those executive function difficulties plus mental health. It's kind of a bit too much on it. I want to be able to like sort of satisfactory or, or take care of an animal sort of, and I don't, I don't want to feel like I'm not meeting their needs, you know? So I think it would be a really interesting episode to, to touch on, but I guess one fit, one thing that I want to ask you first is how many and what type of pets do you have? <laughs> All right, let's get into this. Right, we'll dive into it. You've touched on a really big topic that I have a series of videos planned about. It's the number one thing I get asked, actually, on the executive dysfunction side of things and uh, husbandry, let's call it. Uh, so we've got 13 cats, which is down from 21, and mostly because old rescue animals, uh, some of them in their early oh. 20s. Um, three dogs. Uh, there's a number of fish now, by the way. That's as a result of live stream. We've built an aquarium on the live stream. That's so we have so some cool. fish. We have to have a fish. Um, we've got three ducks, which are a muscovy ducks, type of the type of goose, but they're actually a duck. We have some critically endangered Shetland ducks on the way. So we'll, we'll show you the progress of those. We have chickens and we have peacocks. Two peacocks. You oh, have three dogs. You have an absolute dogs. farm going on. <laughs> you have two peacocks. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a couple of peacocks. Um, are, they, are they male or of, female? Oh, they're both male. Uh, the oh. thing is, right, with, it's actually the girls that travel. The girls have the typical kind of male gender role, right? You know, the kind of like, I'm going to go adventuring, I'm going to go have babies, I'm going to go here, there, and everywhere. It's actually the females, the peahens that travel. So you'll occasionally get a peahen coming by, but the peahens go off, find a boy, then they leave them <laughs> and then they go lay eggs and whatever. And then, you know, is that, so our peacocks, is that because of the peacocks, they have um, like their feathers are, are too weighty that does, do they struggle to fly or is that? No, they can fly. Right. Um, so I think the original kind of, so they're kind of a far Eastern bird um, that hunts snakes, right? They're kind of an interesting bird, but I think that the kind of dragon metaphors come from peacocks because peacocks can actually fly down from trees and their wingspan is, nearly as wide as this room you know and like the tail so like they yeah. actually look like dragons when they're coming down they're quite yeah. intimidating so yeah <laughs> so it's quite cool. a few animals um but my background anyway um with regard to animals was when i was growing up um i grew up uh, my parents were in the army so i was born in germany and we used to move around a lot so we'd never had pets as such what would happen is that military families would have pets because you moved every six months ish uh, people kind of adopted pets. So the pets kind of like moved from household to household to household as people moved around. It's quite complex. Mm. As a result, we really had we had animals around us. You know, I'd have guinea pigs for a few months and then have a dog for a few months and then that dog would go to someone else. And it was all kind of confusing. But in my early 20s, uh, I got involved with cats protection in the UK. Um, that kind of culminated in me actually serving on the board of a few animal charities for quite a few years. Um, but I'd often find time to kind of go down and pet the cats, you know what I mean? Feed them yeah, and that sort of yeah. stuff. And then eventually helping them with fundraising, helping them with organization and then governance and HR and finance and that sort of stuff. Um, as a consequence of that, I'd end up with like, Hey, we've got a three-legged cat. It should go to Mike. Yes. <laughs> I'm like to take this cat. And I'd end up just like accumulating animals that were either, uh, deaf or injured or, missing bits or whatever that's so sweet um, like that one. that's a regular so... joke would come up about me eating them because like there's bits of limbs missing off different ones of them you know what i mean like, it's not true i promise you a vegan of course a someone cat, someone so. in the chat said is it an emotional support peacock <laughs> yeah uh if, um I, I don't want to promote my videos but if you go back a couple of videos you'll actually see me start a video with mr emotional support peacock Whoa. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think it's quite a nice hook. <laughs> so, like, yeah, they're, they're great. Um, but like, I ended up studying a feline studies diploma. Mm -hmm. My background is computer science, but I just kind of have a history of following my interests. And um, we're, we're a bit where, you know, we're financially and time available, right? Um, yeah. But now it's like oh, autism. <laughs> but like, I, you know, got a feline studies diploma. And... I think um, when, I, when I did my biomedical sciences degree at Manchester, I I did a, um, a, f a few modules. So like one of the areas of specialty that I had was in parasitology. And I learned a lot yeah. about like, th there's basically this sort of amoeba sort of like, 
creature called toxoplasmosis, which I'm sure you'll know you'll know about. Um, but it's so it's such an interesting like it's probably one of the more yeah, the but, more interesting um, parasites out there because it has like right. genuine um, like impacts on someone's like emotion, both humans, cats and rats, um, emotional states, and like um, one of the the interesting things about it was that. It actually, because there's like a life cycle of it wanting to go through felines and um, from rats and stuff, um, it actually changes the the biochemistry of the rat's brain to enjoy mm. and be attracted to the smell of cat pee. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It actually, it's a really interesting organism. It, it it essentially makes, for example, things like cats and things fearless. It makes the the yeah, rats yeah. fearless too. Uh, so like, so like the rats are almost like they will go find a cat and they'll they'll not fight for their lives. Do you know what I mean? They're like, eat me. Yes, yeah. it's a really interesting. Bit. Um, cordyceps in ants, mm. less of a pet kind of thing. Though. Like that also does something really similar. And there's quite a few other things in this in the oceans. Big passion mine, marine. There's quite a few things in the marine environment that do really similar things. And it's like neurological hijacking. It's kind of really quite interesting. Have you seen the 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 sort of the ginger the um gender changing crab parasite do you know do you know of that one i can't ah, no but gender changing fish is quite common no, like, <laughs> so like, like i think there's in the internet. there's you like a, a parasite that can only live in like the eggs of crabs so it like mm -hmm. whenever it infects a crab it like basically hijack hijacks its genetic code to make it more likely to have more female crabs or something oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. It's really there's, there's there's loads of cool. I mean, cordyceps is like one of the best ones ever. Like it's cordyceps is a cool like, one. That's cordyceps southern southern hemisphere, not not where we are. <laughs> but like, I'd love to see it. Uh, Joe, I love border collies the most. We have a border collie called Maisie. Um, oh, I love that. I I saw it on the video, but one the video that I reacted to. Oh, she's such a sweet dog. It's just making me want a border collie. <laughs> Mike's colleagues are the rebel. Uh, and so I zoned out and then heard cat pee. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> cat pee is like a substance straight from straight from the devil. Um, mm. You know, can, can be dealt with. Like, I mean, uh, I don't want to sort of turn my channel into the Jackson Galaxy of autistic cat content. Uh, he's a, a creator on YouTube that uh, talks about cats. If you have questions about cats, I'd probably recommend checking out his channel. Mm. Um, but like. Uh, yeah, there are there are sort of uh, substances you can use, um, enzymes and things to break that down. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Anyway, um, managing managing cats, I can I can take conversations off. But in terms of like executive functioning, we um, I have some videos to, to 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 kind of put this together. It is like a really high question I get asked a lot. How to join your Minecraft server is probably the number one question. But like the second one is how do you manage the animals? Mm. Um, is I don't manage them on my own. Number one is a big one, and number two is we have systems for everything. Yes, like systems for systems. We have databases of all of the animals. So whenever anything happens with one of them, it goes into the database. And this means that anyone else can care for them. But then, simple things like feeders are automatic. Uh, like there's one behind me there, which is tuned in to like super chats. By the way, on my live streams, oh. <laughs> so like, it comes in, it sets off the feeder. So this particular feeder has got like high value treats in. Yeah. Um, the other ones uh, do that. Um, I've just got like normal foods. So we've got like uh, electronic feeders, things like litter so trays. When, uh, when, the, when the super chat goes off, do like the cats just hear it and just like run at it to like try and get the treat? <laughs> yeah. So, so before there was actually a bell behind me uh, on, on the shelf, this bell here. I'll be, I'll be a bit careful because I know you're recording. So I've got to be really quiet. Um, this is the cat Mageddon bell. So if I ring this bell, so because the animals can roam free, we need a way to like bring them back in. Yes, yeah. So like if you ring this bell, they're all bell trained and it's like a big brass school bell. I'm just holding the, the bell inside because if this goes off, they're all going to come running. Okay. But they are also now starting to train themselves to the super chat noise. <laughs> <laughs> it's their soft the feeder. Um, so that's kind of just like my side of things here. Like, yeah. like I just really enjoyed it. The API. Uh, I had to buy like a button presser that has an API, and you can kind of code for that. Well, you I do have some. I do have some some particular sort of questions to ask you about, um, like the challenges. But before we talk about those sort of more more in detail, I'd like to perhaps understand what what you think the benefits of 
having pets are to like specifically autistic people. Like, oh, you, you could maybe not really spe just specifically, but if there are some specific ones, maybe mention them. But obviously, like I can imagine the sort of yeah. I'll drop some big ones for you. Yeah, so I've actually been reading. Uh, in research, in preparation for an upcoming video. I'm sorry to keep pimping this, but this is absolutely uh, super fascinating to me. And it's like the number, number two question. <laughs> so, and it's about um, how autistic people gravitate towards non-human uh, animals. So we're all animals, get out mm. of the way. But like, if you've got like cats, dogs, for example, companion animals, how much extra value people who are on the spectrum gain out of that compared to neurotypicals? So that's the first thing. There's a, there's a certain, unfortunately, reading a lot of these studies, there's a lot of, uh, it's called like human replacement or people replacement. And it's a bizarre kind of concept. It's this othering language of, oh, they oh look at Mike over there. He prefers cats to people. And it's like, well, yes, but I'm not replacing people with cats. It's not like I want an army of people around me. I'm just going to replace them all with cats. That's not, it's not where we're going with it. Sure. It's just that we, um, we, uh, get a lot of what we could gain out of social relationships with other humans from companion animals as well. Mm -hmm. And that's just not mammals, but you know, that can be fish, it can be your bearded dragons and reptiles and things as well, but we get an awful lot out of that. And there's an awful lot of uh, benefits that autistic people can gain from it being a fulfillment of a ritual. So it's really kind of hard to explain, but the, yeah. the act of caring for animals like you've got like a routine in the morning so for example we have a routine for feeding the birds it involves just chucking them out a load of corn it's a really simple routine it's very kind of medieval you get a bucket you get the corn you pick it up and just flick it on there and you're done right that's them done and it's like there is something kind of like really peaceful about that and really kind of like you know it's like a life goal just a bucket of corn and chickens and you just chuck corn out for birds it's just like it's very peaceful and it's really rewarding so you, it's really, like on, on one hand, it can be hard to actually get yourself into into an actual routine. But on the other hand, once you are in it and you have that routine a part of your day, it's kind of like a nice thing. I also think that it's kind of almost a grounding thing. So another example is I will forget to feed myself, but the cats won't let me forget to feed them. Sure. So if the, if the machines are not there for the cats to, to feed them or they're empty or whatever, they will not let you sleep. They won't let you rest. They will bother you really badly <laughs> to feed them. Then once you're in that zone of like feeding the cats, it's then like, maybe I should make myself a sandwich or yes, like some cereal yeah. as well. So it like reminds it's, you to kickstart other parts of your routine. Kind of. Yeah, exactly, Thomas. Thank you so much. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. So like the routine that goes along with the animal husbandry does kind of connect in with the routines that you need to follow through as, as a human as well. That makes that's sense. Re that's really cool. Yeah. We also get really good sort of like stimmy value from them as well. So one of them wants to come in. I've got I've got Emma here, and Emma's kind of like she's pretty neurospicy, um, <laughs> but they're great to see. That you know they they feel good. They're purring away. You know, if you're lying down on a bed with like ten cats on you, it's it's a fantastic experience. It's like a weighted blanket, a heated blanket, and like a stim toys all in one. Yes. There's, you know, so there's kind of like that element of it as well. So there's kind of like the physical sensory kind of element but then there is a flip side as well um things like litter trays and whatnot and we've got some unique ways i think of managing that like um how, how are we doing in the chat by the way <laughs> yeah okay, i think we're doing good we're maybe maybe we'll read out a couple of a couple of things <laughs> um renee says my cats generally just steal covers or the best part of the pillow <laughs> <laughs> um Isabella says two of my favorite people doing a podcast. <laughs> oh, thank you, Isabella. Yeah. Uh autistic couple, I'll answer that one. Uh, where is Mike, everyone? Did he say Malaysia? No, my mother's uh Malaysian. I'm on a place called the Isle of Man. Uh the Isle of Man is a little island in the Irish Sea. Um It's not I'm just not know. just men there, though, is it? It's not like a <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> Mostly women over here, I'm afraid. Oh, I can see a cat there. Yeah, so this is this is Emma, and, and she's at her she's at her bowl. But we're on we're on the wrong stream, Emma. This is not this is not the super chat stream. <laughs> you see, I I actually um oh. <laughs> I'll have to. Sorry, Thomas. Anyway. It's so good. I actually um 
Okay, there we go. I for for a long time, I think it was probably because of my my grandma because she has like a a really crippling phobia of cats. Um, she oh, has no. she has this story of like how one sort of summer day, um, sort of a group of cats sort of climbed in through like a small window in in one of her apartments and um, like stole like stole they like stole it like an entire. <laughs> Sort of Easter egg or something, and, uh, and <gasps> apparently that that scarred her for yeah. for life. <laughs> she doesn't like cats, okay. um, but that kind of <laughs> that kind of rubbed off on me a little bit for a while. So I, I I've always been like a very much like a dog person, but when I went okay. to Thailand, um, basically like. I think probably probably about for three or four nights a week I'd go to this Taekwondo center. It was this um, sort of Thai team. Ch- Chiang Mai was the place, kind of in the north of Thailand. And after every session, I would sort of sit on the mats and do some stretches and stuff. And there was always this one cat that would just come up to me and just like sit, like sit between my legs while I was like stretching and. Um, I got I got chosen by the cat and I was I was like I'm trying very very hard not to like you but it's getting more difficult and I I kind of kind of got a little bit of a bond with them and I was like hmm maybe I should change my perspective. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe Thomas. I mean, you're not a million miles from me. You should perhaps you should perhaps visit and we'll see if we can sort of win you over with the cats. But we have dogs as well. I like them now. So, I like them now. Yeah. The dogs and you can kind of stay for the cats. So. Got a few cats. Sorry. <laughs> this is Saber. Got another, <laughs> one. Familiar <laughs> another one. Yeah, there's there's quite a few in here at the minute. <laughs> Let me know if the audio is a problem, guys. <laughs> Daniel Daniel says um, cats get confused around gingers. Cats steal st- steal souls, but gingers have no <laughs> souls. It's a conundrum. Well, there is a that ginger cats <laughs> their one brain. Uh, I cannot, I cannot confirm or deny if this is true. <laughs> Probably <laughs> true. <laughs> I can, I can. Well, I don't know. It's it's quite hard to sort of determine if someone has a soul by looking at them. But I'd, I'd assume that the the follicles on someone's head does not determine the the um, mm. the encapsul- encapsulation. What am I trying to say? <laughs> The the con- the containment of a soul, I would say probably. <laughs> that was a little bit Ghostbusters. <laughs> well, um, you need a cat. <laughs> I I would definitely like, like say say for me when it comes to like the benefits of sort of pets. Like as as I said, I've only really had a dog, and it wasn't really looked after by me. But my first dog, he was from the kennel. Um, he was called Bob. We we quite often called him Bobby Dog, of course. Um, and he was like, um, he had like a midnight coat, midnight eyes. We got him from, my parents got him from the kennel, like about a year before I was born as a puppy. And, um, he was basically my big brother. And I think he lived until about the age of about 14, 15. So it was, it, it was a, a large part of my life for a long time. And I do remember sort of coming home from, from days at school and sort of like cuddling with him at the top of the staircase and yeah i don't know it's um it kind of i don't yeah it's it's kind of like a, like an unspeakable bond I, I don't really know how to describe it very much but it was a, it was a big part of of my life for a long time um still haven't really got over him to be honest <laughs> but it's, oh, dude. Like, you know, like, I don't think you do, and it is, it is actually the worst thing. And sometimes I find myself getting into thought spirals where I'll be, like, you know, cuddling onto the cats, presumably, and, and I'll be, like, imagining, like, when they're going to die or something. Oh. And i be stressing myself out about it. And this sounds kind of ridiculous, and I know it's a human thing, but I do get pretty sad, and then I'll find myself getting quite sort of anxious and upset um, about it. Um and and it's like you know like mourning them before they've gone or even afterwards it's like to a degree it's healthy but and the net sum it's not like an equal sum game of like the amount of joy you get is all got to be repaid with some sadness as well 
Um, and it is hard. I, I completely understand that. Um, in a weird sort of way, I said I had 21 cats and, you know, the average mean age of that was about 18. So, wow. you know, um, a long period. I mean, I think I was 35 before I lost my first cat, um, you know, my first pet. So it was kind of like quite a hard thing to to kind of go through and then, think, you know, quite a few in order. I think it definitely does like highlight sort of the fragi fragility of, of life. Like that was kind of like my first experience with like having it, having a death, you know, in, 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 around me rather, um, which was really hard. Of course. I mean, my parents said that it just kind of run up, run off somewhere, but you know, that's just like what parents say, but, um, Maybe it's, true. <laughs> it's, but it, it really, I don't know. It kind of, I suppose prepared me for like, the nature the nature of what like life is like and you know the the sort of subtleties of um like the value that each day has with somebody or a, or a pet or um no. i remember it hit, it hit me quite hard even though i was quite young no it, well, especially because you were quite young i think um and i think it's like it's quite it's, I mean, I mean, life is difficult and you don't know when, and I don't mean, it's not, not in a morbid way, but you don't know when the last time you'll speak to someone will be or when the last time you'll, you'll see someone. So kind of, it is a reminder. It's a very cognizant reminder of kind of taking each day hmm. on its own, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's well understood anyway that, that pets help with, with anxiety um i know folks from the army that have ptsd service dogs uh and it's i worry about them not having the dog anymore you know it's kind yeah. of like quick we need one we need to, we need to just like succession plan these dogs and like encourage them to get another one because their service dogs getting a bit old you know because it's because it gives them so much hope and it gives them so much hope is the wrong term actually uh relief might be mm. a better one mm. comfort might be it's hard to pick the right word um but you know it's like even when they can't care for themselves, they can for their service animal, you know? Yes. Yeah. Um, Cause that is, I guess, another thing that that's talked about a lot when it comes to like autism and pets, cause you can get autism sort of support dogs and things that are like, I had interviewed um, uh, or Ella on the podcast, I think probably sometime within season two, we were talking about their service dog. Coco, how they help mm -hmm. with like meltdowns and stuff like that. I thought yeah, that was really interesting. And also to kind of position themselves between you and other people to kind of give you just that, just that space mm. that perhaps you might not be aware of yourself. Like I think bubble. there's so much to a bubble. Yeah. And, and dogs are great at that. Um, that almost comes naturally to them, perhaps even more than perhaps a blind person service dog would be. But I don't, um, short of the other content creators, I don't know anyone with um, an autism service animal. But I do know a lot of autistic people with companion animals. Yes, yeah. In fact, um, in fact, I can see from even in this chat, there's quite a few people with like their pets as profile pictures, and, mm. and I notice that quite a lot on my own live streams. Um, people have also emailed me pictures of their pets. I've got an email inbox full of photographs of people's pets. I wow. encourage you to send pictures of their pets. I really enjoy. Uh, you know, people send me pictures of their cats and their dogs and their fish and all sorts of stuff, rabbits and uh, reptiles and lizards. And um, I think it's fantastic. It's a great way to bond with other people. Um, the friends that I have uh, in real life, as it were, IRL. I mean, Thomas, you're a friend in real life, but you know what I mean? Like in IRL, you know, like a ge geographically nearby. Yeah. Um, I've, I've all come, broadly speaking, from either my work with marine and environment stuff or pets. Mm. so it's kind of like like even having pets kind of brings you closer to other people in a good way like if you walk a dog if i walk Maisie, uh in fact she doesn't get walked as much as she should because people want to talk to me all the time they go oh such a cute dog how old is she what's her name <laughs> you know and it's, like, and it's like okay 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 at least it's a script but it's like please i just want to walk my dog <laughs> yeah i think <laughs> i think purple ella was talking about that too like with, as it being like a it's kind of nice because you get a pass yeah. towards people but also like sometimes you just don't want to you can't be asked for it like i think exactly. Exactly. there was someone exactly. in the, the chat called, 
There's someone in the chat called uh, QC Aquaholic, which was talking about the, <laughs> oh, wonderful. the benefits <laughs> of... Nice. I, they said that I have fish tanks to help me regulate. And, like, I actually, for a long time, I wanted to get one of those, like, not fluorescent, but, like, the colour-changing jellyfish. I really wanted to get, like, a colour-changing yeah. jellyfish, a moon jellyfish or something for a while, <laughs> until, I, until I realised how difficult it is to actually have a jellyfish. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, really, really difficult. But it can be done, by the way. Um I've got a, like, we built a fish tank on live stream. I'm just looking at it now. Sorry, it's out of frame. It's just over there. Um, and I understand what Aquaholic is saying because you, you kind of just looking, even the ripples of the water, watching the fish move, watching the plants move a bit. It's, it's very relaxing. It's a kind of a visual stim. And uh, I mean, I, I do a lot of uh, scuba diving, which is another topic I sort of broach on on the channel oh, quite a bit. Wow. And there's an autistic kind of element to it as well, because it's a different type of scuba diving to your tropical thing you might have in mind. Our diving is dark, cold, green, and there's a mm. lot more equipment. Mm. But I really enjoy it. I love being in the ocean, ideally on my own in the dark, and it's great. But I will spend like I could spend an hour just looking at an area of the size of this table. Um, just and it's a visual stim for me. I just really thoroughly enjoy it. I never really thought of that as an autistic thing, but my dive buddies get you know annoyed with me because they want to go swim around, and I just want to like look at something and take pictures of it, or just count the. Uh, my and... um, my my dad is very 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 much into scuba diving. He's he's been to like the. Can't remember where it was like Egypt or something. He's like he he did his like paddy, and it, my brother even got into it at one point as well. Um, I definitely do like like I think. I, I I visualize myself like getting a house at some point and having like a really big aquarium because I just there is something just very serene about like aquatic animals and like interesting even when it comes to like things like shrimp or like like crabs or lobsters they just they're just like they're so, they're so like colorful and oh man it's <laughs> Like anything that's in the oceans now or in, or in streams or rivers doesn't have gravity to contend with. So it can evolve in a way where yeah. they don't need like a, a skeleton. They don't have skeletons. So they can evolve in weird ways. So, I mean, like, you know, I like diving because it's all, it's all interesting and different. And I do a lot of citizen science with that. So, um, no, I, yeah, I mean, I saw a they're kind of like wild pets that I don't need to care for. I saw a turtle, <laughs> a turtle once in, um, in Turkey, I went to... <laughs> what is that? Is that it? It's a seal. A seal. Uh, oh. He looks like an angry seal. No, he's just... yeah, he looks like an yeah. I, I never really didn't look angry, but he sort of he sort of do... he sort of does. Maybe that's just maybe that's just his face. Hmm. Thomas it needs to be rude. <laughs> <laughs> I um, I saw I saw a turtle in the wild once, and it's like one of the animals that I just really wanted to see. Like I've, I've been, I've in person, I, I think probably, um, the most terrifying animal I've ever seen is a squid. Squids, oh, they yeah. just, they, they do something just, um, pr pr primal effect on me. It's just like, I think it's because they have like human looking <laughs> eyes and they're like these. Yeah, their eyes are better than ours. They're, they're from the cephalopod family. And their eyes are actually kind of wired, if you will, from the back rather than from the front. So we yeah. have blind. Sorry, I'm watching. Let's stop. Let's change the subject because this is going to take a two hour long no. monologue on body evolution. No, but I, I, I went to Turkey. I, I saw a, a turtle in the wild, which was really, really cool. I, I, I think mm -hmm. I went to, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I quite like to just see things that, see things in like real life that, wouldn't be able to and like i'd really love to see like a arctic fox or like a you know like, <laughs> yeah me too yeah. <laughs> but people people spend their lives chasing them <laughs> yeah. i've seen the videos of them jumping and i don't know just edited to music they look yeah, yeah. Uh, not edited to music in real life but you know what i mean well yeah, um, i'd love to see them <laughs> I, su I suppose now now that we've talked a little bit about sort of the benefits of having pets and i, I think you know, I, I know you you touched on about sort of um sort of the companionship and I do think that um specifically for 
I think I think for people who have mental health conditions like depression, they can be quite beneficial and also anxiety, which does tend to happen to occur for a lot for autistic people. Uh, but also I think when it comes to like loneliness and isolation, sometimes that can be a, a real big issue for us. So I think pets definitely fill that hole in a sense or, or play a role in our lives in that way. But I think talking about the actual act of having a pet and some of like the challenges, the trials and tribulations of, of owning a pet. I mean, obviously it's going to be dependent on the pet, but um, I'd really like to hear like some of the, the perhaps more difficult side of, of having a pet. Um, so, I mean, obviously losing them is pretty difficult. Taking them to the vets uh, is, is pretty challenging. And mm. I mean, I'm, I'm in a, I've kind of like, one of the things, uh, this is just adjacent, uh, and it's about my autism diagnosis. And my psychologist is really, really, I'm really sorry. Nina's just arrived, so the dogs are kicking off. It's okay. Can we just, live? What can I say, guys? This is live. Yeah, we'll, so, just, we'll just pause it. <laughs> stay on the line. This will take two minutes. Yeah. So one of, the, one of the problems is, you know, if I'm working, for example, and then the dogs kick off, monotropic focus, it can be a big problem because it yes. means... Like, for example, um, on Friday, I was working on a video script that was due out today. I would have had that video on my channel today. It's not on my channel today. I'm not blaming anyone or anything, but it's like the dog's barking and then the cat's knock something over. And it's just like I go from one thing to another thing to another thing. And then the litter train is emptying. So I go and do that. And it's like, shit. And now I literally, and this sounds ridiculous. It sounds like I'm making excuses, which perhaps I am. But the reason for it is I've just sort of now used up the remainder of my energy that I had to do something. Yeah. So I go sit down and I go get back to focus and I just can't again. So managing things like distractions, uh, as my dog Maisie is barking in the background, um, is exactly kind of what I'm talking about with regarding challenges. Mm. But I have tried, like I consider my psychologist, I've tried to kind of like manage my environment as best as I can to suit my needs without realizing I was making autistic accommodations for myself. Sure, sure. And in that respect, making accommodations for your animals too. If you don't have a pet, I'm really not recommending anyone goes out and looks for 13 cats. But if you are looking to do, uh, to get a pet, there are ones that you just feed like once every six months, for example. There are certain mm. sort of simple things and it can be helpful. There are also kind of fake pets. We have, you know, I'm, I'm surrounded by my plushies here. I've got my manta ray over here, sorry. You're all a manta ray. When I'm filming, I'm looking at my manta ray. <laughs> so we've got our manta rays, which meet some similar needs. Mm. Um, I'm thinking like, when you when you were saying fake dog, uh, fake pets, I was talking. I was thinking about Nintendo dogs. You know, like the oh, first yeah. sort of nin, nin, Nintendo DS game, <laughs> Nintendo dogs. Yeah, I remember that one. I remember that one. I remember that one. No, I'm really sorry. Nintendo at some point. The dogs think she's about to arrive, which means that they then start getting on alert and then they'll start barking. So what I do is I kind of like work my schedule around when things like the dogs are going to be barking. So for example, the postman arrives between 1 and 2 p.m. Right. every day. I black that out of my calendar. I don't like start some deep work around that time. Um, when I made my, um, um, my video about uh, my last video, which was originally going to be called Don't Be an Autistic A-Hole. A yeah. Um, I, um, I realize I'm on your channel, so I'm trying to, I'm trying, I'm being, I'm being super polite. <laughs> like, Nina was like, oh, you totally need to get in there. Like when you're interrupted, you just become an a-hole. You just become, you're like, you're, like when you're interrupted, you just, just do it like that. Switch. It's like, yeah. so like, so like managing that is part and parcel of, of, you know, and that's just like an example of like managing myself and managing my, my work and managing my life and trying to reduce the things that cause me difficulties. And so with pets, it's the same. So with pets, for example, um, with the cats, like I say, their, their feeding is automated. Everything goes onto a database. I get reminders for things like, like fleeing treatments, worm treatments, just mm -hmm. the basic kind of husbandry that is literally all automated in notion. So I have a, a notion is yeah. kind of like, app service which i use to put all my video scripts in i put all of my stuff in there so I'm that to... they're a bit different to dogs though because they you don't yeah. have to like entertain them really do you because they're just yeah well pretty much it's more a case of like like if there's a fight breaking it up but like Maisie does that for us as well hmm. so like like birds are like way easy keeping chickens is like the easiest thing uh they're not difficult at all 
to keep. Um, so I get a like farm managing... chat. So I get a, a chicken farm yeah. chat. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But like chickens, chickens are great. I, I love that title. I guess. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know if YouTube would like it. I changed it. But like, um, it's it's not meant like in any way to be disparaging about us and our community. It's more a case of. Um, you have to watch the video. I won't tell us you now. Oh, but like, okay. yeah, so like things like 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 feeding is kind of automated. We've got animals on special diets, and we've got, for example, um, things like this. This this is a, a special diet machine. So it's kind of got special characters on, but it's microchipped. So because all the animals are microchipped, certain animals can have their special diet food from dispensers like these right. um, that we've got scattered around scattered around the house. What so do you mean by animals, special special diet? So Emma, for example, is on a special diet. Um, and so it's really, really attractive. It's a special kind of wet food. And the other animals really, really want to eat it. Now, this machine will only open up for her. <laughs> special machine. If she puts her head in here, it's got a scanner, and it will only open up. It will only open up for her. That's so cool. we've got, like, in that way, we can feed the different animals differently. Mm -hmm. And so we just manage as best as we can. Like, there's just a couple of examples I could, I could talk about this all night, but like trying to find ways that work for you. We've been through every robotic litter tray you could imagine. Um, and like, it's just a case of like finding a method that works. We just have like massive boxes mm. with wood chip that we can sort of dump in a hedgerow. I appreciate you can't do that in a town. We live in the middle of nowhere. Um, <laughs> well, I suppose like, <laughs> like, I suppose like that's touching a lot on like the executive function side, which I think is one of the reasons why I'm I'm being a bit careful about considering getting a pet, but um, I suppose another potential aspect of having pets is because I know you you're talking about the benefits of it sensory wise, but there are also not so nice benefits, not not so nice sensory elements to having pets. Like, how do you manage that? <laughs> okay, so breaking that down a bit more, if we're talking things like pee and poo, right? So. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's fairly that's fairly straightforward. To, that's fairly straightforward to manage, but it is one of the more difficult things. Um, actually, the culmination of the difficult sensory stuff either comes from things like injuries, uh, mm. which we're pretty good at here for managing. Um, I, I, I want to be careful how much I say because you know I don't want to like set people off on your channel. Um, but going to the vet can be quite difficult because vets have got this horrible sort of smell to them. Yes, I'm, yeah. I'm not going to try. Private, hospital smell or kind of it's worse than a hospital smell but it's got that that kind of like chemical cleaning agent smell yeah mixed with which mixed with wet dog and the everything else that you can yes, imagine yeah. that's pretty yeah. horrible and you can't really manage that um for us we don't have that but we are quite clinical in the way we sort of manage things like cleaning and things mm -hmm. so yeah, you might expect uh we've got like robot mops that run pretty much constantly um, you know, and they're filled up with like a special kind of like cleaning fluid that works really, really well. Um, like, like we're quite, we're, we're, we're pretty clean here, but then, then when things get out of hand, like say for example, mopping robot breaks down, we can end up running into trouble quite quickly. And then that can be overwhelming, but that's not really a sensory kind of thing. That's more sure. of a functioning kind yeah. of thing. But if you were here and you were house sitting and you didn't, you didn't have, you won't have to do anything for like four or five days. Mm. Everything is automated to that length of time. Wow. So try and keep on top of it with that buffer. Well, what about like um, like stuff related to like hair? Because that that that's probably like the thing that like um, would irritate me the most. I think. Like... Yeah, uh, totally, absolutely. I, I completely, completely agree. Uh, we've got throws on sofas, uh, which we just sort of just put wang in the wash. We actually have a routine. I mean, I'm talking to mostly autistic and neurodivergent people here. So you kind of, you're not going to judge me too hard on this, but it's kind of like we have a routine. So mm -hmm. we just have like throws which we got from Vinted. Um, really pretty, pretty throws, but they're cheap. And we can just basically like take them off the sofa, chuck them in the wash, mm -hmm. wash them, dry them, and they're back on again, you know, within a couple of hours. And we just sort of rotate through a pile of throws. We just sort of move through those and do the same with beds and bedding and things as well. Um, and that includes things like pet beds as well as our own. Um, so yeah, we manage, we manage hair really, really well, but things like shedding, um, for cats happens twice a year. So they have a shed kind of of their winter coat around now. So like, like I said, like if like the mopping robots and things break now, it's a problem. 
Yes. Uh, yeah. it's, no, it's a genuine problem. I'm, I'm kind of like amping this up. But I'll show you on a video and it will make sense to everyone when you see quite how much hair there is uh, once it's sort of removed. Uh, if we if we lose control, we can lose control pretty quick. So yeah, that's that's. But then otherwise, the rest of the year is fine. Mm. The rest is fine, and if, on, animals can kind of come and go as well. So animals can come and go freely from the house, not the birds. Well, we have, <laughs> we have a very mixed reaction to the concept of cat hair in the chat. <laughs> the yeah, I suppose, like, I mean, guys, like um, and, and any of you in the chat, do you have any questions around sort of the challenges of pets that you'd want to ask Mike? So I think that that'd yeah, probably be a good time for us to have a bit, have a bit of a sort of chat interaction bit. Do it. Let's have some interaction. I'm sorry if I was like waffling too much. Sometimes I need to kind <laughs> of be, like I need to be kind of like managed. So if I'm having like a, like if I'm me if I'm doing like a meeting and it's completely separate, I'll tell people look I'm I kind of have a slightly different communication style and you know if, if I've gone on too long oh, or no, I say was that worry. that makes sense every few minutes. I um I get yeah. told off a lot within my podcast for like interrupting people. <laughs> like there's been many many people who have commented saying oh i like this but stop interrupting people bad okay. taste yes. and then <laughs> yes i'm asthmatic as well so that's particularly difficult for me so yeah so that can be managed with things like this um here is a big air purifier that sits you know this is like literally right next to my desk and it's got a massive massive filters in it and, uh, you know, other brands are available, but you can get the filters on Amazon on subscribe and save. So the filters literally just arrive and then I just chuck them in like once every nine months or whatever. Nice. And that's pretty good. That that works. And we have filters around the house as well um, with carbon carbon filtration. Mm -hmm. uh, I know I'm kind of like leaning on tech quite a lot here, but it kind of is my Mac. Do I get cat hair any food? No, never. Not really. Uh, it depends, right? Like, it has happened where, like, if you're eating something on the kitchen table, uh, where I did all the live collab with Jen, uh, it's possible that a cat, because they like to live high up on the shelves, mm. will, like, jump down. And if that happens, it's really infuriating. Like, like Polly, our deaf white cat, is really fluffy. And when she jumps down onto the table, she'll shed fur. So if you're eating there, that's kind of like a risk. But otherwise, no. <laughs> I had, we had a really good question from Bree asking, okay. does anyone feel guilty at, during a shutdown for not being able to play with your animal? Because I, I kind of, I kind of get that too sometimes. Like sometimes, like it's not. I don't know if it's something related to like social battery, but I, I definitely have it for pets as well. And like I can get a little bit agitated if like pets won't leave me alone when I need to like be by myself. Um, but yeah, Bree, I can, Bree, I can answer Bree's question like absolutely. Uh, so we have a Chihuahua and a Chinese Crested as well. Uh, the Chihuahua is called Trudy and she's black and tan and Karen is the Chinese Crested. Um, and uh, then Maisie, obviously the Collie. Mm. And Karen is like, like I was, um, I had three sort of like small burnout episodes followed by a long meltdown shut down i use the term happy meltdown by the way thomas i got that from you <laughs> just as a way to describe, just a way to describe like yes like last year i just had like so many amazing like and it all came at once like all out of nowhere yeah, all at once yeah. these amazing opportunities i got like corporate hospitality to go and do and see amazing things and i met all kinds of people including like some famous people and it's i got to, it was amazing but bubbled up but, like, and prolonged and then like lack of sleep and then that happy anxiety and the kind of like oh shit I don't mess, I mess up sleep for three hours running on low sleep but you're like super happy and excited and it's like all of the amazing things think about like any of your special interests and like the key people in those and you get to meet them and hang out with them and then you get to do and, and like prolong that and you think it'll be amazing and it is and bang anyway so I'm in my I'm in my shutdown period and Karen is just just she can tell there's something like wrong with me if that makes sense. I'm using the term wrong with them in the, from the dog's perspective. And she goes and gets me a bagel. She goes and gets me a bagel. She finds a bagel. I don't know where the bagel came from. It might, one of us must have given it to her like days ago. This is like a three day old bagel. It might have been older than that. Maybe it was from the hedge. I don't know where she got the bagel from. It was our bagel at some point. It was a, and she brought me this bagel. And she's a, she's a food guarder, is Karen. She absolutely guards food. It's weird because she's a tiny dog. And she'll guard it. She'll growl at the cat. She'll growl at the big dog. So she'll growl at everyone. Like, yeah. but I'm eating. 
but she like literally donated this bagel to me and I'm, I'm, I'm sitting outside and I'm like, I don't want this thing. And I just threw it away and she went and got it and brought it back to me, but she's yes, like nudging it. To yes. Us. Yeah. She's nudging this is going, what I'm talking about. Like yours and she puts it next to me and she goes on that. Well, I'm just like so unimpressed and I'm just, I'm feeling absolutely exhausted. <laughs> I've got a book, uh, a book about autism on my, on my lap, and I'm just utterly exhausted. I can't deal with it. Nina comes home, and I'm like, oh, Nina, like, you've got to do something with Karen. She's got it. She's just, I'm just like, what's she doing? And she's watching this dog picking up this bagel, bringing it to me, and nudging it towards me. She's never done it before or since. It, we now call it the bagel of love. This bagel of love, we call it. <laughs> so like, whenever like, Karen annoys me, Nina says, do you remember the bagel of love? You know, she's a good dog, really. Um, but yeah, I felt like really bad, Pri, honestly, for like not, I, I felt like I was kind of like not looking after the animals. Yeah, like yeah. I felt like, so yes, I, I, I do relate to that. And there have been times when I've gone through really sh- depressive moments in life and it's, or I just haven't, I haven't taken care of the animals like I should have done. Well, I've, I've looked after um, people's animals before and there was one dog that I looked after who was pre- pretty much like, one thing that I cannot stand myself is having an animal in the bed while I'm sleeping. I just can't do it. I know some people are okay with it and that's cool, but I really can't do it. It just makes me feel not good. Um, But wait, I was looking after this dog and like I had this, I had this experience where I was, you know, I was looking after the entire day. I was playing with it and all that. And then I was like, okay, I think I've had enough today. And so like I put it out, put it sort of, outside my room and in the dog bed and stuff and sort of went to bed yeah. and like for the, for the night it was like scratching on the doors and like no. barking and like wanting to come in and then I let it in and I put the dog bed next to my bed and then the yeah, entire yeah. night it was just trying to get into my bed and I was like, no, I, I don't want you in my bed. And it was yeah. like, cause I had a wooden floor. It was like tapping along the wooden floor, just, just trying to get onto the bed. And it was just, yeah. it's just way too that's much. Kind of it. Like, you can train the dogs not to, like some folks would say you can have dogs and absolutely train them not to go on furniture, for example. Yeah. Uh, we, we do, we let them, we let them jump on sofas. But then again, with the caveat, that they're not messy and whatever. But occasionally Maisie will be running around in the fields. She'll be really muddy and she'll come in. And the idea is we'll, we'll, we'll shower her down. We've got like a hot tap with a, with a, with a, with a thing on. We can even wash her with hot water outside. Um, again, all of these things are like conscious ways of like, how do we make this thing that's really annoying better? How do we like resolve that? Hmm. And I take a very sort of autistic view, I dare say. And I mean that in not a pejorative way, in very much a positive way. I take an autistic view of like, life and i go what what is the thing that's irritating me the most right now and how do i fix it and it's like muddy dog okay how do i solve muddy dog and it's like uh a, a tap to wash it with and it's yes. like okay it can't be cold because that'd be horrible i'll give him a hot hot tap and it's like cool hot tap with the thing it's always there and you just sort of blast her down she's a collie by the way so they're not they're not like fragile yeah, yeah. Anyway, if she comes in muddy and jumps on the sofa it's like oh you just made me like half a day's worth of work so it does happen. Mm-hmm. You try not, to. but you can keep dogs off beds and things. But if your dog's sitting and that dog's used to being in bed with you yeah. or being in bed with a human, yeah, I can see how that could be a problem. Well, like, any problem for me? If yeah. it, like, like a snoring dog. Like oh, last night is a good example. So Nina went to bed before me, and I think she had Karen Trudy, and one of them was snoring. And I'm like, oh my god, this is driving me nuts. And I'm trying to like get them without waking her up so I can put them put them away. But yeah. Snorry dogs are a problem for me. But other than that, it's all good. <laughs> I think that, that was a very good suggestion. Hello, Woodshed. Hello, Albie. Welcome to the, the, the... We're doing a live hey. podcast at the moment, <laughs> which is fun. This was this what we recorded, recorded, or Mr. Yeah. Movie. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> Layla no, says, now, now I want a bagel. <laughs> <laughs> I want to bagel. <laughs> oh, the bagel of love story a little bit earlier. Bagel about ten minutes early. Uh, Daniel, you ever watch sad cat videos? It's amazing how existential feel like you get like photo. Yeah, uh, I choose not to. Uh, it's one of the reasons. One of the reasons I don't like social media um, is because you will inevitably get the the sad videos. Mm. And someone will send me a sad video with it, you know, because it might be like a happy ending or something. But I just hate it. And I hate, I hate even seeing genuine. Cat pulled out some, of a sewage yeah, and getting cleaned. 
see it at the end, but I just can't stand it. And also, by the way, um, some people fake it. Some of them, yeah. There's a lot of acrons, and some of the animal charities I've worked with have even filmed themselves going out and rescuing animals. And their content has been, oh, you're, you're fake, because there's just so much fake stuff out there. Mm. I've seen nine out of ten of those videos. Hot take. I don't have evidence. But it's about that. It's in that It's in that region. It's the vast majority are fake. Mm. Um, so I'm, I'm very sorry no, about that. And I just, but even, even if they're fake, there's still suffering on there. Yeah. And I, I'm sorry, I can't even. It, it's a proper set-off for me. It's a proper, proper thing that really upsets me. Oh, um, totally. And it causes arguments. Like a mate will send me like, oh, this is a cool cat thing. Mike will like it. And it's like Mike really doesn't like it. <laughs> Mike really so, mm, why'd you send that to me? Yeah, there you go. No, I can understand me, that. I can understand that. That's, that's it's definitely like one of the negatives of social media is that the most emotional content gets like usually the most views and clicks yeah. and comments. And it doesn't really matter what emotion it is. And like when people see that, they can sort of isolate that emotion and just like replicate it for like their own stuff it's not good it's not good yeah but, it's, but they're like um, even the people who don't like it are the people who contribute to it getting popular that's, yeah. that, that's the whole difficulty of it it's like someone posts like a really bad take online and you comment and say this is a bad take and horrible then yeah. <laughs> it's like you're <laughs> contributing to it getting more views and yeah. like <laughs> Thomas is, I don't know if you, you get it, uh, I do sometimes, I occasionally get people going, uh, I really hate you and your community and your videos and they're really awful, it's, very, it's, not, it's not often, but it's like, it's like, it's like uh, what bit about it didn't you like, and then they'll, they'll, sometimes they'll watch it again, and I'll be like, no, 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 you need to watch the whole video, and sometimes I'll just farm them, <laughs> it's just like, Taz. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking of doing a series on, on my channel of like responding to negative comments like at some point maybe i don't know i'll see i'll see, I'll see what see what the the chat and you guys you guys think but might be something to do later on might be it might be a good way for me to like i don't know because i don't i because i respond to people's comments i like pe people say so it's usually from people outside of the community like like i'll make a video on hyper focusing perhaps and then people someone will try and chime up and say um oh you you why do you have to make this an autistic thing everybody focuses that's why we have scientists who focus on the research and i'm like dude like i just i i <laughs> i i explain to them i explain to them and once i've explained to them they just delete the comment so i'm like i need to find some way to like <laughs> some way i'm definitely going to do that i i i did talk through some of the more uh, interesting i think they're funny I, i'll be honest I, I find them very some really amusing ones but they're quite negative mm. uh, and, it, and it was upsetting uh, i did on a live stream and i'm like okay cool this is a bad idea i'll leave that alone um but what i will do is a response uh, or maybe even tier ranking i was having a little chat with meg about this and she was like why don't you tier rank them i'm like yeah that's a cool idea i'll do a tier ranking um, but of ones that are kind of like misunderstandings of autism, I think that would be a good one. Feel free to do it too, Thomas. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah that's what I was thinking. It's, it's like, it's just nice to explain. Because like, <laughs> even on my monotropism video, people are like, like you said, this is this is not, you're, you're not autistic. This isn't an autistic, no, 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 this is like a human thing because, because yeah, it's like, cool. Yeah. That's actually a good talking point. Let's talk about it. What, what, you know, yes, it is a human thing, but what, you know, because we're all human, but like, <laughs> let's let's talk about it. And I think there's some fantastic talking points from misunderstanding what you're saying yes, as well i think exactly it's kind of cool. uh, no um, no i'm not talking about you it's like people run mm -hmm. like usually on youtube shorts when it gets when one a video clip kind of gets highlighted it usually sort of has some outreach to other people outside of the community that usually i get those comments but yeah i, I yeah, mean I anyway have, like it's, it's when youtube goes when youtube goes um and kind of like pushes the video it's like an onion thing it's yeah. like the autistic community is kind of on the inner side and then like if youtube if, if like the autistic community resonate with a video i find youtube then go i reckon other people might like this too and it pushes it out to the next layer which is mm. full of trolls yes. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah and that's so it's like video does well that's when you get that's when you get the extra <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad thing that just means it's gone to the well it tells you it's like Ah, uh, don't worry about this. The view counts, you know. 
Well, I, I suppose so that we don't derail too much and talk about YouTuber stuff. Um, <laughs> let us let us bring it back to the the pet stuff because I think um, it would be really good to hear if there are any. Because I, I know you brought up some kind of tips and things that you sort of recommend to autistic people who are wanting to sort of have a pet or manage a pet that they have. Um, what I would like to know is, can you give us three top tips? It could it could be more, it could be less. Can you give us some top tips on managing pets as an autistic adult? Okay, number one, um, literally explicitly identify the routine. Now, it might be I feed my cat when I come home from work, outdoors, walk, whatever. That's what I do. OK, cool. Identify that and literally write it down and go, this is what I do when, this is what my pet needs. This is what I do, number one. Uh, number two, things like vet stuff. Um, I've got some pretty advanced tips on that one, which I'll go into in more detail at some point. Um, but it's kind of like anything that you need or your pet needs for the next sort of six to eight weeks, kind of get that in either like, like Amazon subscriber save or something or just like just make sure you have it in like there's nothing worse than needing to fill a litter tray and not having anything to put in it do you know what I mean having to go and dig in the garden for some soil because you, yes, you yeah. put something in everything. that's number two is like supplies basically <laughs> don't think like a prepper but you know like get a bit of that take a, take a leaf out of their book the first one is like identify your routines write them down uh, and the third one is kind of come back to those first two and just make sure that you've got everything in order. Oh, Emma wants out. Sorry. <laughs> Number three. Yeah. Oh, hi, Jeff. Come on. Hi. Okay, cool. Right. So. Number, oh gosh. Okay. Sorry. I'm just tripping over them. Okay. This is Hydra. Everybody, say hello to Thomas. Hello, Hydra. <laughs> you have a very beautiful coat. This is your reminder to Hydra Eight, by the way. Um, Hydra Eight. <laughs> Hydra Eight. <laughs> yeah. Um. And number three, it's kind of like just to revise those two. Key key to my sanity is having my Notion database, mm -hmm. which has got each of the pets. In. And there's always a sad moment when I kind of like hide one of them because they passed away or something. It's not like it's not like a common thing, but you know, it is. Try not to dwell on that. Just just remember the happy times. Take lots of pictures. Share them with friends. If you need someone to share your, your pet pictures to, you can email me, Michael, or just after 440.com. It's always great to see people's pet photos in amongst the other crap in my inbox, but it's nice to see happies. <laughs> um, so, yeah, those two things. Those two things. And number three is, is revise them. I'll awesome. give examples on a video later. But yeah, if you can systematize, I think it means it, it just, I can't believe I haven't for so long. It's my top tip to my past self systematize. Get it, get it into your routine, eh? Like, uh, into routine explicitly, like, like, yeah, explicitly. Um, and some animals, like cats, are really good at it. Dogs are less good at it. But a cat won't let you forget feeding them. They'll wake you up at three a.m. You know. And in fact, if a cat is waking you up at three a.m., if you're a cat person, you've got a cat and it's waking up at three a.m. Probably because you quite possibly trained it to, or you just haven't fed it right. <laughs> like, do you, do you know what I mean? Sure. It sure. could be a bit hungry. So kind of like actually explicitly putting that in. I mean, it might be that you think to yourself, hey, um, this is a problem for me. Sometimes uh, when I'm struggling with either a mental health issue or something else, I struggle to walk my dog, say. Mm -hmm. And you know that and you've written it down and you can revise that and go, well, what I need is a support network. I need a, a friend, perhaps, to walk my dog once a week, maybe. Uh, and, but knowing that and writing it down when you're in a good frame of mind first is so important. And as for cats, it might be. I, I find it a real ball ache to kind of like feed them in the morning all the time. Okay, so what other options do I have? Can I put like a bowl of cat food down for them? Would that make them fat? Would it work for my cats? It might do, it might not. How about a hopper and a feeder, which goes off? They can get quite cheap now. There's loads of different ones. Things like that. Mm. But you can only really think about those things once you've written down your routine. Yes. Have I waffled too much? Did that make sense, chat? <laughs> no, that's brilliant. Thank you, Mike. So if you have enjoyed this episode of the Pod 40 Auti podcast, please make sure to like, rate us if you are on one of the streaming services, and possibly take a look at my YouTube channel. Um, I do have memberships, which the first tier gives you access to uncut streams such as this one in their entirety. entirety? Uh, we also have some badges, 
some emojis, custom emojis that we made on stream, which is pretty cool. Um, and I'm recently um, sort of setting up a kind of different sort of paid content kind of part of my channel where I'll be up uploading um, videos to my Autism University playlist. So if you do want to have access to those, there's no memberships. This stream is not sponsored, but I am an affiliate of Sneak, which is my favorite energy drink alternative, caffeine source, whatever you want to call it. The reason why I love it so much is because it has all sorts of like hydration formulas. At the moment, I'm drinking the uh, cola version, which basically tastes like melted jelly cola bottles that you just get when you're a kid. So good. Um, got some elephine in, in there. And um, honestly, like for me, who struggles with anxiety quite a bit, I do find that usually any drinks or coffee tend to give me a lot of caffeine jitters, sort of make my anxiety worse. But this stuff has just been really great. So happy to be an affiliate. And if you do want to check that out, I do have the links down in the description. Well, that that is my little spiel. Off there, I'm like, um, <laughs> say, uh, it, yeah, I'm going to interject and just say, by the way, theanine and caffeine, I find really helps me. Oh, it's a subject for another day. Mm. It's another subject for another day, subject for another video, subject for another chat. But yeah, I mean, Fun green tea, it, I mean, usually. Yeah, you're good in green tea. Um, but I, I do supplement l theanine sometimes, particularly if I'm feeling like it's going to be a difficult day or whatever. Totally. Um, I mean, you don't really, really need to get... It's kind of going back on my affiliate thing, but you don't really need to get it. I mean, you can get like um, L-theanine powder from, I think from bulk powders in the UK that you can use. It's it's a pretty good, like, it's naturally found in green tea and it's, it's absolutely amazing if you do find yourself very, very tired, like many people with anxiety and depression do, but also um, struggle getting too much caffeine, getting all like the anxiety provoking effects of it. Um, L-theanine su supplementation is probably like one of the best ones. It's good. We, we agree. <laughs> okay, great. Play us out with there are, there are so many songs buzzing around, but play yes. us out with what Golden Pig. Your, like, your song of it the is day. The outro song of my live streams, which is Golden Things by Kylie Daly, available on YouTube and Spotify and other platforms. Awesome. What what is it particularly about that song that? that sort of you I've like got the vibe. it's like it's literally a song about the, like it's it's the can around a campfire song about golden rays of sunshine just happiness and just it's just pure it's just you just check it out it's the song i tend to play on my bureau back screen intro and exit awesome so, yeah well that it's, that it's, will be that song will be down in the Spotify playlist. There is a mixed playlist from all of my previous guests, all of the songs that they've suggested. If you want to go check it out, I highly That's recommend it. It's a very eclectic playlist for sure. <laughs> like <laughs> there are some, um, yes, lots of mixed genres and stuff within that playlist now. It's by Beyonce on there. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah. That's so, amazing. um, Brilliant. Um, Mike, would you like to share some some links that you want people to know about um, to if they want to uh, follow yeah, up yeah. and find you on other platforms? Yeah, if you want to find me at one place, it's www.autisticafter4040.com. Um, it's my website, which will be launching in the next few days. Uh, if you go there right now, it'll just redirect you to the YouTube page. Uh, and also Autistic AF on Instagram and well, I was going to say TikTok too. I'm kind of like not really using TikTok. <laughs> I, did, I, I created an account so that I could just wade through the sewer of neurodiverse content on there. I say sewer neurodiverse content. It's not really neurodiversity sort of content, but you know what I mean. Yes. Meg goes there sometimes. It's it's not a place you want to hang out unless you're going to get frustrated and annoyed. Um it's after the Chloe Hayden thing. That's when I signed up for TikTok. Um, yeah, and find me on YouTube, which is Autistic AF on on YouTube. YouTube I highly, highly recommend going checking out the Autistic A Hole video. Um, there's a little, <laughs> little special little Easter egg in there for for any. <laughs> for any. There is a special little Easter egg in there for the Henley Army. Yes, the, the Henley Army. <laughs> <laughs> the Henley. That was Legion. actually so that was so much fun to do. Thank you for being such a great sport.
Well, I really hope you have enjoyed this episode of the 40 OT Podcast. And if you did tune in live, please make sure to let me know and comment down below. Definitely head over to the YouTube channel if you are on a streaming platform, as I said. Rate, do all of that stuff really does help this podcast get out to more people. And um, yeah, tell me what you think of the new formats and um, really love to know. I hope you're having a very, very lovely day and a lovely evening. Now I see you later for another episode of the 40 Orty Podcast. See you later, guys. Bye. <laughs>